hell and it's gone on far too long. Hi, good evening. Uh, I want to, you know what, I'm going to go up here, if it's okay, because I need to put this down. Um, you know, a few years ago, I could have done this from memory, but I have a brain injury from the wars that I have to read stuff now. Um, and I want to thank Reverend Barber and the Poor People's Campaign for asking me to speak today about what war does to veterans. All right, so, you know, for many veterans, uh, those of us who have taken part in the killing and, and, and are honest about it, war has made us broken people. We live with afflictions of the mind, the body, and the soul. This has always been the case. And, and for no more complicated reason than this, war is organized murder. The effect of it has been, and always will be, a very profound and damning effect. Thank you. Even in our good wars, the Civil War, after the war is over, 400 to 500,000 men died of morphine addiction. Contemporary tales talk all the time about the old Civil War vet drinking himself or shooting up or smoking himself to death in the 1870s, 1880s, and 1890s. Our other good war, World War II, 16 million men and women went to war. About 7 million of them saw combat. Of that, 1 million were discharged, over 1 million were discharged as psychiatric casualties during their time in service. And remember, PTSD wasn't recognized by the VA or by the American Psychiatric Association until 1980, until those men were in their 60s or 70s. For my generation, can I get a, a, a thing of water, please? I'm sorry, one of the things also too is I take some meds that makes my mouth dry. Thank you. For my generation, veterans were killing ourselves at rates three to four times higher than our civilian peers. For the youngest among us, veterans in their 20s, they're killing themselves at rates six times higher than their brothers and sisters who are the same age. For combat units that have come home and that we have tracked, we are seeing rates of suicide as high as 14 times what their civilian brothers and sisters are experiencing. And this is true for all generations of veterans that have been to war. World War II veterans are killing themselves at rates four times higher than men their same age who did not go to war. And there should be no doubt about this at all. Because there's been dozens of studies that have been done as early as 1981 that have concluded that there is a very real and clear connection between combat, guilt, and suicide. And it goes back to what happened to us in the beginning. We thought we were going off to be heroes. But what we found was that we were no more than pawns for the weapons companies, the bankers, the politicians, and the generals. And that we were villains to those that we were occupying. We did. We really went off thinking that we were going to be heroes. But war is organized murder, though. And so those of us who take up the sword are due to die by it at some point. My own life is wrecked and debilitated by an anger and a rage that I unleash without control on those I love the most. And I have a guilt and a sadness that won't leave me. And that brings me continually to thoughts of ending my own life. But dying by the sword is just not an individual experience for veterans, but also for our society. 
because the wars that we conduct overseas are mirrored in the wars we have here at home. And what reason are these wars? Democracy? Freedom? It's capitalism. But we have lies and we have myths that we are told to cover up the killing we do overseas to put and keep in place dictators who will buy our weapons and sell us their resources. And when we come home, we come home to live in an unjust and unequal society with the largest prison complex in the world and a political system that seeks to oppress voting rather than to expand it. My friends, I put 10 years into the Marine Corps. I went to war three times, but I never served. But being here tonight with you all, I feel like I'm now serving. And together, in this moral revival, we can overcome the lies and the greed that direct the killing and the suffering. And we can find justice and love, both here at home and abroad. Thank you very much, and thank you all for what you're doing. Somebody's hurting our people, and it's gone on far too long, and we won't be silent.